Well, there's no landmarks here and there because I'm afraid that the subspace hole can necessarily just try to take over the universe. Hey everybody, this is me, Piglet here, and I'm Sonic the Hedgehog here. We are back for some more of the Maxi Toys videos, and welcome back to my last play of Super Smash Bros. Brawl for the Nintendo Wii in the likes of the Subspace Emissary Mode. So last time we were pretty much done through um, the Subspace Bomb Factory Part 2, and also the entrance to Subspace. But after we realized that we don't have any sort of characters at the time being, because obviously all the characters has been transformed into trophies themselves. But the question is though, who still managed to survive through all this, um, cause of this chaos? So today for this episode, we're about to continue on and move on to the Subspace Part 1, because we say that because there's gonna be more to it than that on the Subspace level, so um, yeah, with that being said though, we still end up pawning in the, uh, the subspace um, level though, environment wise. But even end up that we actually got 64% clear um, completionist. So, um, anyways, without verbal ado, let's get this thing started with subspace part 1. Oh, I see what these badges are for. Basically, every time when you actually just manage to attach to your King Dedede's badge on you, whatever, when it was like uh, attached to the trophy and stuff like that, what happens was though is they uh, did manage to bring back themselves to life. So even that though, that's actually a pretty unique item. So not a quest though, so here we go on to Subspace Part 1, while we're going to be taking control of either Luigi, Ness, and even a newcomer introduced in the Super Smash Bros. universe, King DDD. So yes, the third Kirby playable character we're going to be um, selecting throughout the entire journey. So even then, I think it's just going to get a little bit more interesting, and that was absolutely gar garbage whenever when that happened. But anyway, um, since then we actually already play as Luigi, so even then I will talk more to him briefly. But even then, now, unfortunately though, you won't even see him um, screen at the moment. Besides that, we already got a um, couple of stocks remaining, so... But not like rest though, but we're still able to actually play as him until we actually get into later on. So, um, let's talk through Ness first, shall we? So, Ness, he's actually the returning playable character ever since Super Smash Bros. 64 and Super Smash Bros. Melee. And just like the ones in Super Smash Bros. 64, he's um he's essentially the unlockable character, just like it does in the original game. Because of this, though, you, in order to actually unlock him, is by simply he's pretty easy to unlock, though, for uh, this particular. And, and this is actually the first ever unlockable character you're gonna have to face off with. Which obviously the main premise of this is that you have to play as uh, play fi five brawls in at least uh, five times until you actually just uh, battle against with Ness or you can reflect ten project uh, projectiles and then you should simply able to actually just uh, unlock him which I'm not, not exactly sure how this works or simply just actually finish subspace part one until you actually manage to like you know decide to play as him so now, as far as the, uh, his movesets is concerned, he's basically, you know, I think we already mentioned about this in during- Oh, wait a minute, we already mentioned about this in during the beginning part of the game, while simply just actually just to face off against with Porky, if I remember rightly. So, um, anyway though, so there's not much anything to talk through, um, that's honestly, because we already talked about him during that time, so... Anyway, so, as far as the, um, subspace part 1, and especially noticeable in the next level afterwards, that um, basically the entire premise of this level is that can be described as capturing your friend system. So even then though, that um, if you have, if you remember, think of playing through Sonic Generations again, but except the fact that we're not going through travel through time and past or future, present or anything else that's still desirable. But instead, we need to actually rescue your friends, or in this case, rescue all the cap uh, characters, is by simply grabbing those trophies after winning to boost special attack. Or even then though, the instant KO, um, technique, so... Yeah, take this part for example, then we need to actually grab Pikachu, so once you grab all these trophies for this specific character, what happens was though is that you're able to actually play as those characters again, so even then though, that should be pretty worth a while, and obviously we're gonna have to grab them all, so, yeah. I believe, um, in the Runaway Guys playthrough on this particular game, they only missed out only one character, and that was the form of Ike himself, so even then though, that, um, 
He's essentially on the bottom part of the level, while Simpix is actually approaching to the left, and you should be able to actually just manage to get him though, so, but even though no, sometimes it's really hard to actually get yourselves all the characters on your first run through, but even though no, that's not too much of an issue for me. So anyways, let's talk through King Diddy D, the new playable character introduced to the Super Smash Bros. universe, and it's also that, uh, well, he's the, the main villain of the Kirby series, but even then though, he's like, I'm really glad that he's actually making his playable debut in this particular Super Smash Bros. title, but even then he does make a return in Smash 3DS and Smash for Nintendo Wii U, so, his first appearance was obviously, um, Kirby's Dreamland for the Game Boy, which he was just act out the final boss in that game. And let's talk about his movesets real quickly. Um, his standalone B attack can perform as an inhale, which basically fun functions the same thing as Kirby does, except you don't actually have a copy of abilities, because, you know, King DD, um, King DD's only weapon is obviously his hammer himself. And side special attack can perform a Waddle D task, which every time you try to do that, Waddle D will start to pop up. And up special attacker performs himself a Super King DDD jump, which can provide you for a, a little bit of a heavy side of things because he's actually the heaviest character out of them all, similar to how it does it for Bowser. But even then, we will explain more on Bowser stuff until we get into the, uh, the latest levels throughout. So, rather right than that, though, there's actually the uh, Mr. Game and Watch, which we're hoping we can actually try to uh, deal with this, even though that sometimes that the puppets themselves can actually distracting us. But I digress though, so unfortunately we lost him. So the final, the final thing though is that, although sometimes that um, King Diddy, although we will talk more details on King Diddy until later. But for now, let's talk on Luigi for example, for instance, for sure, for shall we? Sorry for a lack of dialogue there, ladies and gentlemen, I do apologize for that again. So as for Luigi, he's also the unlockable character, similar to Ness and Captain Falcon. In order to actually unlock him, is by simply deciding to play through 22 matches in Brawl mode, or even play classic mode without any using the any continues, or to simply finish this level when you're actually trying to lock him. So yeah, that's all there was to say about him. So um, yeah, and truth be told, this is going to be the final time we're going to be letting Luigi become an unlockable character in the Super Smash Bros. franchise because after we're releasing um or before releasing the fourth entry in the series, that he will become um locked from the get go. So even then, though, that will be very very handy for that. It looks like there's going to be a one-on-one -on -one fight between Bowser and King DDD. So, if you ever played the Japanese version of the, it uh, depends on what characters you'll be selecting for either those two. Um, you know, Bowser usually calls it Koopa in Japan. And if you ever played a Japanese version of Super Smash Bros. 4 and uh, Super Smash Bros. Brawl, mind you, that uh, the announcer just actually calls it DDD itself, rather than putting King DDD on it. So, in the international version, it just calls it King DDD. So, um, anyway, so evil versus evil. That's actually a pretty interesting touch to I have to admit, though. Because, you know. So, anyways, let's talk more on the King DDD's movesets. Is that, obviously, that uh, we already mentioned about the up special attack performs a super DDD jump, which actually feels more like I think what they're trying to do is they I believe they're actually trying to reference those specific movesets on the final boss in the uh, the actual Kirby uh, Kirby streamline for the Game Boy. So uh, specifically in 1992. So um, yeah, with that being said, that um, sometimes the uh, the Super DDD jump can actually uh, lock in a momentum and stuff like that, which can provide you some little bit of a control issues. We even know uh, this is another um, jump uh, special recovery owners if you don't uh, accidentally fall down to the bottom of the pit. However, there's a little bit of a downside though, mind you, is that sometimes you actually get yourselves a little bit of a locked momentum there. So um, anyway though, and the final um, special attack in here he can perform is a down special attack. What he does is that he pulls up a jet hammer, which is kind of a more likely a devastating weapon if I have to say so for myself. So uh, that's actually pretty interesting. So yeah, weirdly enough though, is that the music background on this battle is that we're actually going to be face off against with him in the likes of the Giga Bowser's theme, so, um, from, um, Super Smash Bros. Melee. We even know, though, since then though, that we constantly managed to fight against with, uh, Giga Bowser during the Melee playthrough, which I think is a really remarkable success for for that department. Yeah, I have to admit though, Sonic, I have to admit on that one. So, um, hopefully it should be down any moment, so... 
But yeah, you can see Master Hand is still unconsciousness after all that, uh, you know, the taboos um, attacks. Even then, though, that I don't really think he'll not able to come back to life anytime soon. So, there we go. Now we're going to kick the legs off Bowser's butt. Alright, so that was it. That was, um, Subspace Part 1. So we only got about, um, you know, uh, one sticker and one CD, which we haven't pointed things out, though. And that was the form of one sticker, which is Yoshi's Egg from Yoshi Touch and Go. And the CD we've only got, and that was the form of Mother 3 Love Themes. So even then, though, that's actually pretty well compromised. So, um, anyways, we've now got ourselves four characters in our hands, in addition to actually bring back the others as well. So even then, though, things should be self-explanatory. So, um, yeah, let's move on into the next level. But before we actually get onto this, now we can actually play as any levels anytime we want. So even then, though, yeah, it's pretty interesting. So now we're going to be moving on to Subspace Part 2, but the only difference was, though, is that we're going to be playing as a different character, like, you know, something relatable to the Kirby franchise. So yeah, Kirby also revised from that special badge. So, anyways, for this particular level at this point, is that we're going to be playing as Kirby for the entire time, so even then, uh, yeah, that's all it usually goes. So, there's actually a special requirement in order to actually proceed to the story, though, on the other hand, specifically on this level's case, that uh, we will eventually come across into the Peach Trophy and the Zelda Trophy, which we easily spotted those in during the, uh, this beginning, beginning part of this level, so things should be able to be twice as not more as like, oh, what?! God dang it, I got exploded by randomness of, you know, bomb heads and stuff. So, um, anyway, so when it comes to, um, the subspace levels and themselves, these are by far the hardest levels in the entire game, at least as far as I'm aware. But even then, though, we're actually on 30 stages at the moment, so even then, though, that's actually pretty long when it comes to these little stage environments or stage um, layouts. Unlike how it does in Super Smash Bros. Melee, that it usually contains, well, specifically on the adventure mode, they only contain only 12 stages. And specifically, uh, 11 stages or something like that, or 12 stages in the 64 classic mode? But even though I'm not exactly sure how much they were. So anyways, uh, well off the bat though, there's actually a yet another prize uh, box, which actually contains a new trophy we actually got. But I'm not exactly sure if this is the true new one, but even though we hopefully guarantee we can actually just to see what this is involved. So, um, anyway, though, so here we go in Subspace Part 2, so even then, though, it, it feels more likely the exactly the same thing as Subspace Part 1, but even then, though, except that we're actually going to be playing as Kirby for the entire time, and also judged by the fact that the background is actually a little bit different when it comes to the visual standpoints, so, um, even then, though, the, the music itself is almost exactly feels identical between the two, so, yeah, that's obviously the main choice of this, so... So yeah, you're gonna have to be most likely you're gonna have to collect a specific characters, but even then though, that time, um, yeah. So yeah, the trophies we need to get is um, either both um, Zelda and Link, because if you grab those two, then you should be able to actually come across into the proceedings to the story. So if not, then you won't be able to actually realize about something is that, well, since that um, obviously both, um, well, Bowser has already been revived. However, though, in um, Ganondorf, that he can't actually revive himself just yet. But you need, in order to actually unlock him, though, especially knows about now he was actually on the good side, technically, that, um, basically, that uh, we need to actually rescue both Zelda and Link. Because if you do not save those two, then you won't be able to unlock Ganondorf. So even then, that's far as worth mentioning. And the second thing you might actually know something is that you also need to actually require a warrior trophy. Because if you clean ignore his trophy, then obviously the cutscene will not trigger at all. So even then, that's have to require a lot of Kyoto's requirements. So yeah, that's obviously worth mentioning. So, because yes, this is going to be a multitask when there's a specific moment where um, we need to actually get a lot of Kyoto's in order to actually just provide us to actually keep just Get over here, please, our minds, because you just 
somehow kept on avoiding us with, uh, you know, your invincibility frames. But anyway, though, but since we've almost done with the subspace emissary modes, and even then, though, we only got, uh, two more levels to go, actually, before we actually just have managed to complete the entire story, so... At least specifically the entire mode of this, as far as this point in time. So here's our another stock ball, which we can actually revive our new life and stuff like that. So uh, a few things I want to mention about this is that obviously today was actually forms of uh, what today is it actually, Sonic? Uh, today was actually forms of the uh, 16th of Sunday, the July City Fernando for 2017. That is. So basically, there's quite a lot of things that are worth mentioning though, is that for one, we actually got ourselves the first ever Nintendo Switch game, even though granted we haven't exactly got ourselves our Nintendo Switch just yet, and that was the form of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, because, um, I will say we're trying to get Zelda Breath of the Wild because of the Legend of Zelda marathon we're going to be most likely tackling through. However though, we might decide to save that and during the Christmas time, much like how it does it in, um, a Link to the Past, oh no, not the Link to the Past, uh, but let's just sell a Link Between Worlds on that during that later, later down the road. And also, uh, I can't exactly know what's about as far as this point in time, sorry for a lack of dialogue here, ladies and gentlemen, I do apologize for that again. So, um, yeah, let's just grab this reflective badge, so just in case we're able to actually just reflect those projectiles back at these, some of these enemies. So yeah, that's why we actually got ourselves Mario Kart 8 Deluxe the Nintendo Switch right now. We even end up that, you know, we haven't exactly got the, the actual Nintendo Switch itself just yet. So um, there's Rob over here, in case we need to actually grab him. So yeah, I believe we actually got quite a few characters left in order to actually revive them back. So even end up that we can actually do quite a lot of exploration going on here. So almost like a reference to a re Metroidvania game. Speaking of Metroidvania type of style of game, that's how uh, we're going to come across into the final level of the game, but perhaps we'll actually talk more on that later. But even then though, there's Ice Climbers right here, so hopefully we can actually get those two, two duos back. And there's also there's going to be Snake, Solid Snake, that we can hopefully try to get him. Uh, before we actually proceed, we need to double check what's behind here. There's actually a bonus uh, box. So hopefully we can actually obtain that. So, um... Uh, yeah, in regards to that, and it's also the film that we actually already saw, that was the form of the new film we actually did saw, but it, thanks to the um, Cars 1 and Cars 2 simultaneously that we actually already saw the retrospective-wise, we managed to finally manage to solve Cars 3, which, while well, I've seen the film so far, is pretty okay, but even then, though, that I think this film is considerably much more better than the previous predecessor with, you know, Cars 2, because um, Cars 2 is considerably as deadly as the worst Pixar film that's ever been produced. However, though, that I still really think that uh, the, uh, it's not as like uh, as great as the first film that it usually handles. But the only positive thing I can think of is that they actually focused on Lightning McQueen again, because you know Lightning McQueen is actually the main character. So, but yeah, the story is a little bit too rushed out at one point, and even then, though, that I really don't understand that the ending part is really too confusing at one point. But Again, much like to speak for Wave 3, is that uh, we're not going to spoil the ending to this, because obviously, that if you guys have not seen it, then we're not going to spoil the ending, so... Yeah, as far as worth mentioning for that part. So I believe we're pretty much almost nearly towards the end of the level. In fact, we only got one more road set of enemies here, which is specifically these. So hopefully we can actually just hope we're trying to get ourselves one more character before we actually revive all the characters throughout the entire army. So even then, as you probably get the suggestion, so... Anyway, so, um, yeah, with that being said, for the, uh, the, uh, the worst to best, um, cars girls, as far as there's, there's only three of them at the moment, um, easily the number one is actually the first film, and the second one is easily Cars 3, and the third, and it's predictably the worst of the bunch, is definitely Cars 2 for sure, because, you know, Cars 2 sucks, so. Anyways, enough about this little kinds of stuff. So, uh, yeah, we need to actually grab more here because of the story progressioning. So, yeah, that's it for Sp Subspace 2.
So yeah, if you manage to, again, bypass Wario or Link or Zelda, these things will not happen. So, driving wise, we got Putty and Shell Creepers. And as for stickers wise, we actually got ourselves uh, Shrukui Promanza, which I can't pronounce that very well. Do apologize for that. Uh, Stormy Albatross again from Sonic Riders. Uh, Ricky uh, Winterborn uh, from 1080 Avalanche. Dribble from WarriorWare Mega Party Games because of MPG. And finally, Yoshi Ship for Yoshi Tipsy Turvey, or Topsy Turvey. Better known in Europe, it's actually called Yoshi's Universal uh, Gravitation. Because, yeah, there's another difference between these two types of countries with those different types of names for each, you know, games and stuff like that, what they're different known as. So, um, anyway, 75%. Jeez, 75% already. Uh, we're doing pretty well so far with this 100% completion, as far as I'm concerned with that being said. But even then, that's all there is to really say here. So, um, yeah, we actually got ourselves all the characters revived now. See, Fernando, in addition to actually having, um, you know, Luigi, Ness, and King DDD, and Bowser, and Ganondorf, and Wario. See, even then, though, we should be able to be clarified for just for that. So, um, anyway, so we're going to have to end things off just as far as in this point right here. So, join us next time on Let's Play Super Smash Bros. Bro, Subspace Emissary Mode, specifically. Is that we're going to be going on to the, probably the longest level in the entire game. The Great Maze. What's so long about it? Well, we will discuss more on that later. So, see you guys next time. Later, fellas. See you guys next time. Hmm, we need to go find a map around here somewhere, though.